Welcome back. This entire video is going to be about five mistakes that I noticed that I made mistakes that I've seen other people make when it comes to the common application. If you're not aware, the common application is how most students apply to colleges in the United States. And these are basically five mistakes I've seen a lot of people make along the way, which I think that I could try and help you avoid. Whether you're in ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade or 12th grade, just filling in your applications right now. These are things that are easy to remember and hopefully will go a long way in making sure that you can get into the colleges of your dreams. So first things first, the feedback on the Dreamers College essay course has been absolutely insane and today in this video, in the very end, I am going to be announcing the winners of the Dreamers scholarship. Now, I want you to know a few of the stats that went into the scholarship. We had over 200 applicants and out of that, I have given a 100% scholarship to over 25 students. But if you're not one of those 25 students, there are also financial aid packages I reserved. About half of the students who applied for the scholarship have received some sort of financial aid in terms of a 50% aid package, a 65% aid package. And finally, you have the 100% Dreamers scholarship. We have students from Kazakhstan, Peru, Colombia, India, Nepal, Pakistan, all over the world who applied for the scholarship and I am so so happy to give all of you deserving candidates a shot at trying to craft a really powerful college application essay. So stay to the end of the video and hopefully you lucked out. Now one more thing I wanted to talk about before we jump into this video is a very very exciting collaboration I've made with an organization known as College Fair. College Fair is essentially a completely free virtual online college festival which lets students from across the grades in high school to come and interact with admissions officers, students who have startups at universities like MIT, Carnegie Mellon, University of Pennsylvania, all of these individuals who could potentially give you mentorship opportunities, research opportunities, give you experiences in entrepreneurship, give you experiences in STEM in one place. Now, I will also be having a seat at this virtual college fair and you can come and interact with me personally to talk about the Dreamers College essay course and sleep deprived dreamers and to understand a little bit more about the college application process as well. So the registration for the get ready for college fair is extremely, extremely simple. All you have to do is fill in the Google form that I have linked below. The event is on December 5th, which is this Saturday from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. IST. And I cannot wait to see all of you over there. Now, with that out of the way, let's get into the video. So I'm going to be talking about five mistakes that I made in the common application a while back, which I further rectified. And I'm going to be doing that by showing you my actual common application. So you can see the activities I listed, the honors and awards I listed, the additional information section I made to try and understand how you could avoid some of the biggest pitfalls that a lot of people make. And again, these are really simple to fix, really practical tips that I'm giving you, but they do go a long way in showing your admissions officer that you did pay attention to the details. So let's get into the first mistake that I think a lot of people make. It's important to remember that if you're an international applicant, you might not have too many honors and awards that your school is giving you. So the biggest pitfall I've noticed people make is that they really didn't put any effort or thinking into what could actually go into this entire section. To give you a little bit of context, you can talk about five awards that you've received. You can talk about what level you achieve those awards at, whether it's at a state level, an international level, a national level, a district level. And you can also go into what grade you won that award in. And these were the five awards that I personally spoke about. I spoke about the United Nations Award I won. I spoke about the AP Scholar Award I won, which if you want to know a little bit more about, if you've done three APs, you get an AP Scholar Award. I spoke about a psychology quiz I participated in, in which I got a national ranking. And then I finally spoke about a small award I received for my work with differently abled individuals. Now, each of these awards does not necessarily have to be academic in nature. If you notice my United Nations Award or my award for working with children with special abilities, these are awards which which are due to my entrepreneurial ventures, but they still are distinguished achievements that I did make throughout high school. So if you're thinking, oh, it can only be about the marks I get or the numbers I have, that's not necessarily true. Any kind of award you received could potentially qualify for something like this. Another thing you're going to notice over here is that I did talk about the fact that I got like 100% in maths in a little bit of an indirect way because you want to also show that you do have some academic achievements. And to be very honest, I was not a topper 
example i did not come first in india first even in my school for that matter but i still wanted to say that you know i am good at something right so i managed to squeeze that in by talking about the subject excellence awards which my school personally gave me if you have above 90% but that's extremely common so i tried to level it up by also saying that i got technically 100% in maths in my 10th grade board exams which made me a national topper in maths now that is the truth but it's also not the most impressive thing in the world which is why it's really important to phrase these things extremely well and another thing that i think a lot of people don't really understand about the entire honor section is the fact that you should give a little bit of context if you look at the psychology quiz for example i said ranked fourth out of 3861 participants in the fortis psychology quiz psych ed national finals now the idea of putting in 3861 was to give a little bit of context to fourth i could have come fourth out of 10 people fourth out of 100 people but the fact that there were 3861 teams that participated in this quiz is important for a college to know and i also gave that piece of information because let's be real a stanford admissions officer is not aware of this psychology quiz i'm talking about when in reality it is the only quiz for psychology recognized at a national level conducted by fortis hospital so i know it's a big deal but how do i talk to a college and show them it's a big deal by putting in these contexts and i think that's something that a lot of people tend to miss when it comes to the entire award section now mistake number 2 The second mistake is also going to be clubbed in with the third mistake and the fourth mistake because all of these mistakes come in the activities section of your common application. Now for those of you who have not started filling your common application, it gives you 10 slots to talk about the activities or the extracurricular pursuits you've had throughout high school. Now, a few things that I didn't understand when I was going into this process was a bit of strategy when it comes to the common application and this is where I think people make a lot of mistakes. Something as simple as how you've ordered your extracurricular activities in the common application. I personally believe that there are two ways you can go about it. Number 1, you can really try and put things which have the same theme together. For example, if you have a lot of extracurricular activities that have to do with theater, you have a stage production, you've taken an online course, you've done a research paper studying a particular play that was written in the 1970s. I don't know why I came up with that example, but I did. Let's stick to it. Those are activities you can talk about together because when someone's going through your application, let's be real, they don't have too much time, they don't have too much patience, and they want to extract as much information about you with the least amount of effort as possible. And the best way to do that is by sort of clubbing together these activities which have the same theme. It lets someone understand that okay, this is about theater, this is about theater, this is about theater. This entire chunk is just devoted to this high school student's interest for the field of theater. Another way you can approach this and this is the way that I chose is arranging it in just descending order of importance to you so starting with the activity that you believe defines your entire application then going down in sort of like decreasing in order of importance or maybe time commitment as well so for me if you look at my activity section I have spectroverse at the top then I have president of student council then I have my research internship then I have an advocacy position when I was a volunteer with the Lathakaroy Foundation I have filmmaking I have my launch x I have YYGS I have have model un the sakura exchange and finally my design thinking internships so i sort of gone in a descending order of things that i believe that define my application now the third mistake that i feel that a lot of people make is really in the hourly commitments that you talk about a particular activity what do i mean by that two things number one i feel that when people start talking about their hourly commitment and their weekly commitment they become very unrealistic and this is something a few admissions officers actually do to test the integrity of your application they'll just add up the amount of hours you're talking about if you have one week and you're talking about five activities in that week they'll add up the hours and they see if that exceeds the maximum capacity for your weekly hours and in some cases it actually does and that is the easiest way to get someone to lose faith in your application because after that they're just like this person's inflating the amount of work they've done in this activity for no reason at all because if you are truly honest you will understand that some activities took more time some activities took less time and that's perfectly fine and if you go through my activities list you will notice that some activities were for a lesser number of weeks in the year but had a very intense hourly commitment per week for example if you look at my exchange program in Japan the sakura exchange that was only one week but i said 60 hours per week Now that's okay because the duration you're doing it for in terms of the entire year is extremely small but if you look at spectroverse for example i dialed down the number of hours per week which was i made it 10 hours per week and i turned it into a 40 week per year basis 
Now, it's also important for you to understand that 10 hours per week is a lot. This was just my most important activity and I want you to make sure that when someone looks at my hours per week distribution, they can tell that this activity is getting the most amount of time. And that also ties into your common application strategy. Now, the fourth mistake I think people make when it comes to the entire activity section is really in the wording of your descriptions. So let's look at Spectroverse as an activity and really look at how I use the description to talk about it. Now, founder at Spectroverse is the main description it comes under. And because I've said founder at Spectroverse, I don't have to repeat the word founder in my description. A big problem people face with the entire common application when it comes to the activity section is that the character count is extremely, extremely brutal. You do not have space to elaborate on what these activities are. So you need to make sure you get your message across in the least amount of words. Now, what does that imply for you? It means that you need to talk about the tangibles and the impact you've generated with your activity in the least amount of words. You can't be talking about why I started Spectroverse or what gives you the motivation to spend all of this time on Spectroverse. It's all about what you accomplished and it's just black and white. So a good thing to talk about over here is numbers, for example. So if you look at my description, I said, created employment platform for persons with disabilities. That was my one line summary of the entire organization. I didn't go into any details. I just said, created employment platform for persons with disabilities. After that, I talk about my tangibles, 27 corp partners, 5,300 plus PWD candidates, 63 placements, five global chapters, UN award. I did not even say what the UN award was. I just said UN award because chances are that in my honor section, they read the fact that I received a UNV award. So, you know, they might be able to connect the dots, but that's a risk I was willing to take because I wanted to mention it. If you look over here, I've not even said 26 corporate partners or I had 26 corporate partners. You don't have the space for that. You can put short forms. You're allowed to put, you know, the and sign. I don't know. I don't know what the actual sign's name is, but like the and sign, you're allowed to put that in place of the letters A and D. Now, let me take another activity to make sure that you've understood my point. Let's take my Latakaroy Foundation volunteering experience. I said, conducted PWD awareness campaigns at five companies and sensitization sessions at 14 companies. 14 companies. And then I talk about how I signed Aon Hewitt as a CSR partner and I learned sign language. So again, just tangibles, just the bare bones of the entire activity, the things that really held up those activities. And then you can use your essays to sort of get into what those activities were about, what you learned, why you did it. All of that is going to end up coming up, but not for this section. So to finalize, three mistakes people make in the entire activity section. Number one, they aren't strategic about how they're ordering their activities. They don't talk about the most important activities. It's not clustered well. It just comes across as extremely shabby. Number two, when it comes about the hours per week and the weeks per year, people aren't as realistic about how much actual time they're spending on the activity. And even if they are realistic about it, it doesn't do a good job at showing the admissions officer what activities are the most important to you. And I think that's what these hours per week and weeks per year are really trying to see. And number three, you want to make sure that your activities descriptions are extremely action oriented, extremely to the point and make sure they communicate what impact you've really generated instead of just the subjective ideas behind all of these pursuits. The last thing I want to talk about with the activity section is that you should try and have a mix of activities that you've been doing for a long period of time and activities that you've done for extremely short bursts of time. I think it's extremely important for college admissions officers to know that at least something you've maintained for a really long period of time and have put consistent effort into because that just shows a quality of who you are as a person. If all of your activities say, oh, I did this in 12th grade, 12th grade, 12th grade, senior year, senior year, senior year, they might be a little skeptical as to why you started those activities in the first place, because it might seem that it's a last ditch attempt to try and make something come up for your college application. But if you've been doing things since your freshman year of high school, your ninth grade, then they really know that this has been something you've been putting active effort into for a long period of time. That's one of the reasons why musical instruments are such a popular extracurricular activity, because kids have been doing it for eight years, nine years, 10 years. It shows that they have dedication and commitment to something they're doing. And you don't have to have, you know, a musical instrument, but try and identify which of your activities are long standing because that does say more about you than just that particular activity. Now, onto the last mistake, which I personally feel is the biggest mistake people make when it comes to the common application. The fifth and final mistake I see people making tons of times when it comes to the common application 
is the additional information section. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's basically 650 words apart from your common application essay that the common app gives you in order to express any situation or give a little more information about something you've spoken about before. Now, this mistake gets split into two parts because I see people using this section in two different ways. Number one, if you use it as an opportunity to just write another common app essay, this is not a place for you to be story like. It's very important for you to know that this section is purely for objective information, which brings me into the second mistake. People not knowing how to use this well enough to demonstrate some of their activities. I use the additional information section to really delve deeper into my most important activities because I wanted to show the admissions officer a little more than just the measly character count they gave me. So I split the entire section into three parts. In the first part, I spoke about Spectroverse. In the second part, I spoke about my research internship. And in the third part, I spoke a little bit more about Launchax clubs and what I really did because I felt like I squeezed too much information in my small activity count and I wanted to try and elaborate a little bit more. Now, why is this extremely helpful? It shows which of the activities are most important to you and which of the activities have the most going on for them. Another big problem that a lot of admissions officers face is that they aren't able to verify what the information is you're giving them. For example, in my activity box, I spoke about how I had 26 corporate partners. How do they verify something like that? By really going into detail about what Spectraverse was for me. So in the additional information section, I really broke down all of the core pillars Spectraverse had. And most importantly, I tried to put a few media links so that they could go through and see some of the newspaper clippings or some of the news attention from various public sources over a period of time. So that this just doesn't become something I'm seeing. It really becomes an activity which is getting vetted and verified by all of these agencies that are around me. So that is the core mistake I see people making with the additional information section. Either A, you use it as this opportunity to tell another story which nobody is really asking for or b you don't capitalize on the space you've been given to really talk about the activities you've pursued and which of the activities are most important to you and another small piece of advice i have is if you've had a bad grade or you know if you've not done academically well at one period of time don't describe why that grade went wrong over here you know for example i messed up one of my school examinations right before i submitted my applications i got probably something around an 80 percent and i was really afraid that Colleges are going to look at that and just say that, oh, you know, this kid's not capable enough to go over here. And I wanted to talk about it in the additional information section. I wanted to say that, you know, there's a reason why this happened. But in the end, I chose not to do it solely for the fact that it's normal to have bad grades from time to time. It's normal to mess up. And mentioning it in the additional information section only brings more attention to it than detracting for it. So I think that's the only other piece of advice I'd give you. So those are the five mistakes I've noticed most when it comes to the common application. And one bonus tip I would give you is that be very careful of how the common app formats the sentences you're typing out. One of the mistakes I initially made was that when I was looking through my essays, I didn't look at, you know, whether some were bold by mistake, whether some were italicized by mistake. And when the final PDF came out, I noticed that the formatting was completely messed up. And I think that's just a bug in the common app itself. Sometimes you'll write an entire essay and then when you review it in the PDF form, all of it is bold, all of it is italicized. Some words have been joined together so there's no space between them. So I'd say proofreading your common app before you send it is extremely, extremely important. Now, on to what you've been waiting for, the scholarship results. With students spanning over 15 plus countries and 50 individuals who have received some sort of financial support for the Dreamers College essay writing course, I am so, so happy to announce these names because going through each of their essays, going through each of your essays, I was genuinely just taken aback by, you know, a lot of the circumstances that you faced. And I'm so happy I got to launch this program in the first place because as I said, education should be accessible and I want this course to be available to every individual who truly deserves it. So with that out of the way, if you hear your name called out, you are one of the Dreamers Scholarship awardees and I will be reaching out to you via mail as well for further details between tonight and tomorrow. The 100% Dreamers Scholarship has been awarded to 25 individuals. I'm going to be saying their names out on camera and for the other 25 individuals who won the 50% and the 65% financial aid packages, I will be attaching a Google document down below so that you could check if your name is one of them. Number one, Sajal Singh from Kanpur. Number two, Setukrit Panwar from Solan Himachal. Number three, Malik Saleem from Islamabad, Pakistan. Number four, Mohammed Hagar from Cairo, Egypt. Number five, Laura Sophia from Bogota, Colombia. Number six, Pratyush Patnaik from Bhubaneswar. 
Number seven, Muhammad Al Harti from Saudi Arabia. Number eight, Samiksha Singh from Gaya. Number nine, Amirta Preethi from Tamil Nadu. Number ten, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm going to put this up over here from Kazakhstan. Number eleven, Jeffrey Joy from Kuwait. Number twelve, Shambhavitya Pandey from Bhopal. Number three, <laughs> number thirteen, <laughs> Shridhi from Bangalore. Number fourteen, Vaishali Garg from New Delhi. Number fifteen, Marcella Silvera from Peru. Number sixteen, Oday Bhardwaj from Rajasthan. Number seventeen, Shreya Hegde from Bangalore. Number eighteen, Ren Ghanderi from San Jose, California. Number nineteen, Aditya Ray from he is not mentioned where he is from. Number twenty, Jia Manchanda from Mumbai. Number twenty one, Nena Punia from New Delhi. Number twenty two, Rishita Ghosh from Mohali. Number twenty three, Aryan Mishra from Gurgaon. Number twenty four, Sherlock Langevin from Guyana. Number twenty five, Anupa Khanal from Kathmandu. And we have a number twenty six, Yash Agarwal from Siliguri. So these are the twenty six one hundred percent Dreamer Scholarship winners. There are another thirty individuals who have received financial aid. Go check your names out in the Google Docs below. Thank you so much for participating in the Dreamer Scholarship. I hope to see all of you in class and see you in the next video. Bye.